We are continuing our discussion of the graphs of the various trigonometric functions. In this video, we're going to take a look at the cosecant function. Um, the formula, of course, is y equals cosecant. And one of the things you need to remember um, as you think about the cosecant function, first off, the cosecant function is um, the reciprocal of the sine. So it's actually 1 over the sine of x. Or remember that sine corresponds to the y-coordinate. So it would be 1 over the y-coordinate. And I've referenced the sine value for each of our angle measures um, or radian measures in the table here at the bottom of the screen so that you can hopefully um, see the connection. So let's start out um, calculating a few of these. And again, you have the unit circle there to reference. So if we think about the cosecant of zero, that's going to be one over the sine, which is zero. And we've talked about that previously, that you cannot have zero in the denominator of a fraction. So the cosecant is undefined at zero. Then if we think about the cosecant of pi sixth, working through our first quadrant, the cosecant of pi six would be the reciprocal of one half. And if you flip one half, which is kind of the concept behind the reciprocal, it becomes two over one or simply two. So the cosecant of pi sixth is two. Then let's think about the cosecant of pi force. The cosecant of pi force, again, if you use the idea of the reciprocal, you would have two over the square root of two. However, as we've talked about, you cannot have a radical in the denominator. So we do have to rationalize this answer by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the square root of two. So we have two on the square root of two all divided by two. And then since I have a value of two in the numerator and the denominator, it will divide out and I'm left with simply the square root of two. So the cosecant at pi force is the square root of two, which is approximately 1.4. Let's think about pi thirds. The cosecant of pi thirds, again using the reciprocal, would be 2 over the square root of 3 when you take the reciprocal of the sine. But again, I notice that I have um, a radical in the denominator, so I'm going to rationalize by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 3, so I have 2 square root 3 all divided by 3, which is the cosecant of pi thirds. So you have 2 square root 3 over 3, and that's approximately 1.15. Then we're back to the cosecant of pi halves. We're at our first quadrantial angle. Cosecant of pi halves is the reciprocal of 1. So you'd have 1 over 1, which is 1. If we follow the rest of them, we know whenever we have, um, let's see, I've got a wrong value there. At 2 pi thirds, that should be the square root of 3 over 2. I got a, a mistyped at square root of 3 over 2, and 5 pi 6 should be 1 half. I apologize. I have a typo there. Okay, so anytime you have a third, like pi thirds, 2 pi thirds, 4 pi thirds, it's going to be 2 square root 3 over 3. You just alter the sign based on the, uh, the quadrant you're in. And in quadrant 2, the sign is positive. Therefore, the cosecant would be positive in 
quadrant 2. So I would have 2 square root 3 over 3. I would have square root 2. And then I would have um, 2. At pi, be careful, the cosecant of pi, we run into the issue again because you're going to have 1 over 0. So at pi, it's going to again be undefined because we cannot have 0 in the denominator. As we move around into the third quadrant at 7 pi sixth, the sine values in the third quadrant are negative. Therefore, my cosecant is also going to be negative. And so at every sixth value, 7 pi sixth, 5 pi sixth, 7 pi sixth, your value is going to be 2, but in this case it's negative. At 5 pi fourths, we're going to have negative square root 2. And at 4 pi thirds, we're going to have negative 2 square root 3 over 3. 3 pi halves, the reciprocal of 1 is again 1, and it would be negative. Again, as I rotate around and I'm in quadrant 4, in quadrant 4, the cosecant, again, my sign is negative. So the cosecant is negative. So at 5 pi thirds, I would have negative 2 square root 3 over 3. At 7 pi fourths, I would have um, negative square root 2. At 11 pi sixth, I would have negative 2. And then at 2 pi, which is the same thing as 0, it's again going to be undefined. And remember, wherever a, a particular function, whether it's a trigonometric function or an algebraic function, wherever it's undefined, we're going to have a vertical asymptote. Okay, so we're going to take a look at what the graph of the cosecant would look like. And again, I want to try to show you and kind of make a connection back to the sine curve. So when I draw this, okay, so we're going to start out, got to draw our x and y axis. So we have the y axis and we have our horizontal axis. On the y axis, we usually put our 1 and negative 1 and we use our quadrantial angles typically on the horizontal axis. So that would be 0 pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi. I also could rotate it um, negatively and go negative pi halves, negative pi, negative 3 pi halves, and negative 2 pi. Now if I think about the sine curve, which we talked about earlier, and I want to sketch that in here so you can see how it's connected. The sine curve begins, ends, and mids at 0. It maxes at 1 and mends at negative 1. So for the sine curve, you would have basically this curve here. If you're rotating backwards, again, it begins and ends at 0, mids at 0, minimizes at negative 1, maxes at 1. And so again, you would have this particular curve. So in kind of the dotted blue, I have graphed the sine of x. And again, I want to try to help you see the connection to the curve, um, and to the cosecant. Okay, so if we're going to graph cosecant, wherever the sine is 0, when you take the reciprocal, it's going to be undefined. So wherever the sine is 0, we're going to have a vertical asymptote. So that's going to be at 0, pi, and 2 pi. So we're looking at multiples of pi. We're going to have vertical asymptotes wherever the sine is 0. 
Then at pi halves, the cosecant was positive 1. If you think about pi sixth, pi sixth had a value of the square root of 2. Okay, pi 6 had the value of 2, excuse me. Okay, so we had a value of 2, so that means I would have been somewhere above this 1. Okay, up here at pi 6. At, um, so we end up with, again, think about it because it's a reciprocal it's idea you're going to flip these curves. So this curve is going to flip upwards between those asymptotes and then the other one is going to flip downward okay that's it, kind of the idea of taking the reciprocal causes them to flip into the opposite direction and again you have to stay between the asymptotes remember with asymptotes you get really really close to them but you never cross and you never touch them okay so there's the graph of the cosecant if you look at it to get both the upper curve and the lower curve, we have to go from zero all the way around the unit circle. So our period is 2 pi. We have to go all the way from zero all the way around the circle to get the upper curve and the lower curve. Okay. And so there's the graph of cosecant. It begins with an asymptote, ends with an asymptote, mids with an asymptote. Then you have the upper curve and the lower curve. So some characteristics of the cosecant. It is a function. It still passes the vertical line test. Our domain is all real numbers except for the multiples of pi. 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, because that's where we're going to have asymptotes. Our range is from negative infinity to negative 1. Notice that there's no values. We don't, we don't touch anything between negative 1 and positive 1. Okay, so where our range goes from negative infinity to negative 1, and then it jumps to positive 1 to positive infinity. Again, it is periodic. Our pattern does repeat, but it repeats every 2 pi. It is odd because it's symmetric to the origin. It did not cross the x-axis, and it did not cross the y-axis. So there are no zeros and no y-intercepts. And our vertical asymptotes occur, again, at the multiples of pi. Okay, so 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. The cosecant is probably not as commonly used as the sine function um, because remember the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So some people would tell you that you could use cosecant um, instead of sine, but in some ways why would you want to do that because then you're going to wind up with a fraction um, because of the reciprocal idea. So again, the cosecant doesn't have as many practical applications as perhaps sine, cosine, and tangent. But again, remember that ultimately your cosecant function begins with an asymptote, ends with an asymptote, mids with an asymptote. You have an upward curve and a downward curve.